This evening on House and Home, Henry of Origin Gas Talk is back with Uncle Gasman talking more on safety with gas. Norman of Pims stresses more on the need for a proper education. Our best of mum Miriam has another recipe to share on cooking with Besta. And for more great quality products, we join the team over at Brian Bell once again, showcasing the latest buy available at all Brian Bell stores. A very good evening to you all and welcome to another House and Home production. With the weekend gone being a long weekend, many of you would have started your week today, with some of you having to work a normal day yesterday and would have started your week then. Speaking of yesterday, here in the nation's capital, the temperatures dropped considerably where we ended up experiencing some pretty cold weather up front, not forgetting the continuous showers that came along with it. Regardless, I hope many of you managed to enjoy the long weekend where I noticed quite a number of jet skis or wave runners hitting the seas over the weekend, especially on Sunday. A great weekend to enjoy the outdoors. If you didn't get a chance to plan an outdoor outing because the long weekend crept up too quickly for you, then make sure you make a mark on your calendars the next long weekend or public holiday approaching and ensure that you do get to enjoy it outdoors. There's nothing more refreshing than spending time outdoors with family and friends. Now moving on with the show, let's join Henry and Uncle Gasman for the Origin Talk Gas segment and I'll see you shortly. Good evening everyone, this is Origin Gas Talk. I am your host Henry Maipu. In our previous episode of Origin Gas Talk, we discussed efficient burning of gas. You can always log on to MTV website www.mtv.com.pg and view this segment and any other previous segments from there. We also have printed flyers that are available at our various depots around the country or you can simply call into our office to collect a copy of the flyers there. As well as flyers of our previous 8 block campaign we already presented to you on this show. We continue on with our 8 block safety campaign when dealing with gas. As I mentioned last week, we spoke on excellent tips to create efficient burning from your burner and stove. This evening, we continue on with our safety with gas tips, but this time focusing more on cleaning your gas stove to maintain the quality of efficient burning and also keep your kitchen and home safe. We at Origin recommend that your gas stove be checked regularly. The following is an easy step-by-step -step process that will help in maintaining your stove. Origin prides itself in safety and feels that it is our social obligation to ensure that every individual and home enjoy the benefits of cooking with gas in a safe environment. Therefore, the first thing you should do when you want to clean your gas stove is make sure the gas is turned off and the burners are allowed to cool down. Ensuring there are no unwanted accidents, this shouldn't take longer than 15 minutes of your burners to be safely cool and able to be touched. Have a bucket or dish of hot soapy water ready, so once the banners have sufficiently cooled, take the gas banners out and soak in the dish for several minutes. Make sure that the water is hot. Hot water helps to break up the grease and soot that have built up over the period of cooking those delightful dinners. Once the banners have soaked in the dish, using a clean rag, remember do not use shoring rags or harsh cleaners like steel wool in case you damage the banner. Using a clean rag, wipe the banner thoroughly. Upon wiping the banner, get a straight pin and clean the gas banner holes. Remember to never use a toothpick or an item that may leave behind pieces that will affect the burning of your stove. While the banners are drying, wipe the gas stove down, making sure that all the grease and grim have been cleared before placing the dry and clean banners back onto the stove. Remember that if the flame of your banner is not blue with a yellow tip, then it's high time you took to cleaning your stove and banners. Every block on our 8 block safety campaign will help keep your home safe and most importantly, help you enjoy the full benefits of LP gas in your kitchen. These are very simple and easy steps. And most importantly, it allows you to keep a consistency on your banner to keep burning efficiently for longer. If there are any points that you missed out on, you can always log on to MTV website, www.mtv.com.pg to view this segment of Origin Gas Talk again. Once again, as I mentioned earlier on, if you'd like a copy of our flyers on these safety tips, please do contact our Origin office. Contact details are up on your screen or call into our Origin depot nearest to you. We also have available gas banners and various other appliances. 
If you are interested, call our toll-free number 180-2468 or email customer underscore care at originenergy.com.pg and we can assist you with your guest needs. Just also a friendly reminder to residents in Port Mosby, you can also call into Courts PNG and collect a flyer from our Origin House School that we have set up within the Courts showroom. Thank you again for joining us. Hope to have your company again next time on our next Origin Guest Talk episode, where we will continue on our next topic, focus on our Safety with Gas Awareness campaign. Don't forget to keep a lookout for Uncle Gasman appearance at your nearest Origin LP Gas dealer. And remember, LP Gas, life made easier. Have a good evening. Great tips there and thank you Henry and Uncle Gasman for sharing those safety tips. Just a quick note to all our residents that use gas, it's always handy to know where all the Origin gas depots are located. If you're not sure, please do contact the Origin office and ask. Also ask for the location of all other outlets that do provide gas refill services. Some are located in various residential areas within town and they're handy, very handy to know. Especially if you run out of gas in the evening, it's good to know if there's a refill service in your area to save you from driving all the way to a gas station or a shopping outlet where they normally have gas available. Just a thought that I know will come in handy. Now after the break, we join Norman of PIMS and the importance of reading printed material. <music> Good evening viewers and welcome once again to this, the number 21st PIMS episode on House and Home. I was standing outside the Nadzab Airport terminal in Leh waiting for an early bed flight to Port Mosby some time ago. A bus pulled up carrying students who seemed to come from a tertiary institution in Leh for one of those early flights. The face of the newspaper man who was selling the early morning newspapers at the entrance of the terminal lit up somewhat. Today, I will make a good early sales to these students. He waited. I too was waiting in a sense and observing. We were both disappointed. Not a single one of those students went and bought a newspaper to read. Being students, they could be excused if they had no money. Of course, they had their mobile phones to keep them engaged and busy. It is a sad truth. Modern young people read fewer books, newspapers and magazines. When was the last time we parents saw our children reading? This is a big factor that contributes to the lowering of English standards everywhere in the world. An expatriate English teacher colleague of mine at the Passam National High School, East Sipic Province, recently told a story from the mid-1980s. In one of his classes was a boy from a remote school in the Highlands. I guess without too much hesitation, he had drawn his conclusions about the performance of that student in English. He would be among the bottom group of students. Surprise, surprise. In spite of remoteness, the disadvantage, the odds, that boy proved to be one of his best students in English with exceptional and excellent writing skills. Puzzled, the teacher called in the student one day and asked him about who taught him and where he had learned to write such good English. The student explained to him and the teacher has never forgotten. You see, the student told the teacher, we have an expatriate white missionary at our school and I regularly went to his house. I have read all the magazines and books in his house several times over. I read whatever I can lay my hands on. I just like reading. I can see Mr. Bruce Copeland is almost jumping out of his seat. He can hardly wait his turn to talk about mastery learning of English at PIMS and the Norman CK Institute NSI. So without further delay, over to you again, Mr. Copeland. Thank you, Mr. Siki. Good night, everyone. This has been an exciting fortnight. The talk on Latin roots last week raised a considerable response with viewers calling our phone number. Most were parents who wanted their children to become involved with derivation from Latin roots and an increase in vocabulary. So many callers wanted more Latin roots. Here we are again. I have had no reference book 
on Latin roots over the years, though now I find that much is recorded on Google. There is a report by Wikipedia, Latin words with English derivatives. My recall has been from memory from the time of my childhood. Mastery learning is for life. But tonight I will give a list of 170 derived words. I will move quickly to provide a broad overview of Latin roots, prefixes and suffixes. But let us preview prefixes first. Anti before, antecedent, anteroom, antenatal. Pre before, prescription, prehistory, precursor, preview. Anti against, anti aircraft gun, anti corruption. Re back or again, return, reiterate, review. Trans across, transfer, translate, transact, transparent. De down, destroy, defeat, deploy, debase. Determine, post after, post meridian, post haste, postpone, post date, inter, between, international, intercontinental, interracial, interplanetary, ex, out of, exterior, external, expel. Now let us review a list of suffixes. A-T-E, to make, rejuvenate, create, animate, Excavate, motivate, IFY to make, magnify, simplify, intensify, deify, OR, ER, IST, one who, typist, sailor, tailor, killer, fighter, artist, driver, ION the act of, translation, reaction, action, rejection, starvation. AL belonging to, national, medicinal, dental, mental, fundamental, full, full of, wonderful, fanciful, beautiful. Now we move to the Latin roots. Aquus equal, equality, equation, equator, equity, equivalent, anima, breath, Animal, animate, animation, aqua, water, aquarium, aquatic, aqueduct, aquifer, cado, I fall, decadent, decay, decade, cadence, caro, flesh, carnal, incarnate, carnival, carnivore, reincarnation. Cavus, a cave. Cavity. Excavate. Concave. Cedo says as I go. Proceed, procession, recede, precede, recession. Curro, curses I run. Current, course, recur, cursory. Claris, clear. Clarify, declaration, declare. Clarion, claret. Crux across, crucify, crucial, crusade, crucifixion, dens a tooth, dental, dentist, dentine, denture, facio factus I make, factory, manufacture, fides faith, confide, fido, we call dogs, fido, confidential, fidelity, infidelity, infidel, Finish the end. Finish. Final. Finite. Define. Confine. Frango fractus I break. Fragile. Fraction. Fragment. Fracture. Infringe. GE the earth. Geology. Geography. Geophysical. Jackie ejectus I throw. Reject. Inject. Conjecture. Eject. Project, Magnus, great, magnify, magnificent, magnate, terra the earth, terra firma, terrestrial, Mediterranean, inter, terrain, traho tractus, I draw, 
extract, tractor, contract, protracted, mito, I send, omit, transmit, omission, commit, remit, movio, I move, mobile, immobile, motive, motivation, motion, mare, the sea, marine, maritime, mariner, mare, mediterranean, Manus the hand, manual, manage, management, manuscript, pars, partis, apart, participle, pars, compartment, department, pes, pedus, afoot, pedal, pedestrian, impede, biped, quadruped, tripod, pono, I place, postpone, Repose, depose, impose. If 175 Latin based words can be presented in a TV program, just think what could be achieved in a class over 40 periods a year. One word derivation would take only five minutes. Teachers have difficulty coming up with a systematic way to promote spelling, forms of words, and meanings. Latin gives a useful series of word packages to enable words to be grouped by prefixes, roots, and suffixes. Students need to become skilled with words. Use it or lose it. If students get to high school with only a few hundred baby words, they are in trouble. They cannot even read newspapers, let alone textbooks. The best asset for any school are the comprehensions in the kids' magazine of the national newspaper. A teacher who has collected these stories over several years and pasted on cardboard for students will have just as many readings as the boy in Mr. Seeky's story from the remote Highlands mission who went to the top of the class. Thank you, Mr. Seeky. Good night, all. Thank you, Mr. Copeland, for yet another interesting, helpful and informative presentation on mastery learning in English, particularly your further discussion of Latin roots. Why are Latin roots or Latin word derivations important? It is because 60% of the English language comes from Latin. Did you know that? Knowing the meaning of a Latin root helps you to know generally the meaning of many other words built on the same root, even though you may not know the specific meaning of each of the word as well presented by Mr. Copeland. We receive on the average about 150 calls straight after each of the last few episodes. We say thank you to every one of those scholars. Our certificate in mastery learning in English for semester two, 2014 at PIMS and the Norman Sike Institute, NSI, plus the other courses in matriculation, grade 12 upgrading, correspondence, business, computing, accounting, and others start on the 7th of July, 2014, which is next month. You can call the numbers scrolling across the bottom of the screen right now. In closing, Students and schools in faraway remote areas are doing it tough. Compared to web and schools, those in remote areas do not have as much access and exposure to enabling factors such as TV, internet, good facilities, teachers, resources, and the most significant one, a large population of interactive English speakers. However, if there is one thing that remote students can do that can really help, it is reading. Don't forget that. Irrespective of your location, when you read, it is like you are having a conversation with somebody in English, even though that person is not there. When you read, it is as if an English teacher is right there with you. Reading independently teaches you correct grammar, writing, spelling, the very important vocabulary of new words, and the list goes on. To students out there, particularly in remote disadvantaged schools, I say this, in spite of the odds, and difficulties, you can read your way to success. That remote student from Passam all those years ago proved it. As students, if you do not have a habit of reading, you are the poorer for it. You are losing out in a very big way something very, very important. One Charles W. Elio said, books are the quietest and most constant of friends. They are the most accessible and wisest of counselors and the most patient of teachers. That's all we have time for tonight. 
Once again, I thank you all for your attention, not forgetting my co-presenter, Mr. Bruce Copeland, of course. I'd like to announce that this series of PIMS episodes will soon end. We cannot thank you viewers enough for your support throughout. After tonight's episode, there are three more to go. We certainly have come a long way since our first episode in June 2013. It has been challenging, but enjoyable and fulfilling. Fulfilling in the sense that we get a lot of feedbacks from parents, families, students, and citizens who appreciate and value information that comes from these episodes. Make sure you do not miss these three final episodes. Till we meet again in two weeks' time for another and one of the few remaining PIMS episodes, it's good night to you all. Have a safe and good week. Thank you. A valuable topic shared there by Mr. Sike, and I do hope many of you, both students and parents, took note of that. With today's generation being born in this digital era, it has its advantages and disadvantages. More and more students are focusing their time and attention on social sites and not so much on what is considered to be the most important thing, reading newspapers, magazines or books, etc. And the downside to this is we'll most likely to see a lot more students fail their English subjects. Now last week I was reading a letter of interest from a student applying for a job and I was appalled at the poor use of the English language. What struck me was I knew this person and their family background and knew their educational back background quite well. Now having known that, I saw it as inexcusable for this person to have written a poor letter of interest regardless of where their main interests lay. Also what I've noticed is that communication among people has become a lot, whole lot less intimate. A growing number of people have become quite antisocial, preferring to pay attention to their mobile phones than the person they're sitting with. Besides the downside being antisocial, the other downside to this is that those that prefer to spend more time on their phones will find themselves struggling to hold a normal conversation among friends and especially among new acquaintances. A number of you watching this evening will know what exactly I'm talking about. Try not to let this get too far. This can be a recipe for disaster. Friendships could collapse, relationships could collapse, family bonding too could collapse, possibly even marriages, all because you choose to pay attention more to your phone or other gadgets alike than the company you're with. More on House and Home in a moment, so do stay watching. Welcome back. It's good to know and see that many women are now making the exceeded effort to take better care of themselves, whether it be losing weight, exercising to get or keep fit, eating the right foods and a whole lot less of the junk food, taking pride in their dressing or basically attending to their overall appearance, looking a lot more well-groomed than usual. Taking better care of one's face has become a welcoming habit to see for many and I get to hear the normal complaints about acne, puffy eyes, dark skin around the neck, but there's one thing that caught my attention over the weekend and that was dark circles around or under the eyes. Now I wouldn't think that would be too much of a problem with many, but I have noticed a growing number of ladies walking around with dark circles around their eyes. Now dark circles I've learned can develop at an early age in adolescence and early 20s, but it's more common in older people. Dark circles around the eyes can develop due to various factors such as hereditary, lack of sleep, illness, stress and most common factor today, nutritional deficiencies. I'll share some simple external home remedies that can help reduce the appearance of these dark circles but it is advisable to the factors I've mentioned into consideration in order to notice change. Having mentioned the various factors, having a nutritious and balanced diet which should include fresh fruits, Salads, and if your budget permits, yogurt, can prevent the appearance of dark circles forming around the eyes. Daily exercise along with deep breathing helps blood circulation and free-flowing oxygen throughout your bodies. It also reduces stress levels. What's also important is adequate sleep and relaxation. Along with all of that, here are some remedies you can try out at home to reduce the appearance of these dark circles and brighten the eyes and reduce fatigue. Apply cucumber or cucumber juice around the eyes. Wash off with plain water after 15 minutes. You can also mix potato juice with cucumber juice in equal quantities to reduce the puffiness if puffiness appears with the dark circles around the eyes. Wash off with water after 15 minutes. 
You can also mix cucumber juice with lemon juice in equal quantities, apply and then wash off after 15 minutes. These are just a few remedies and they'll go a long way if you simply take better care of yourselves. Exercise, a balanced diet and a good amount of rest will see much improved results and keep those dark circles away. If for some reason symptoms don't improve and you're doing everything right, then please do see your doctor for a full medical, especially your blood pressure. You may have an imbalance of something that may require medication, but nevertheless, exercising should be encouraged and keeping your fluids up is also very helpful. Lots of water to keep you hydrated as it can get pretty humid here in PNG. We'll be back with the Brian Bell segment on House and Home in a moment. Good evening viewers and welcome to another House and Home segment with Brian Bell. I'm Jane Takirama and assisting me tonight is the lovely Puro. Microwave oven plays an important role in the hectic lives for many of us today. Microwave cooking is fast, convenient, energy efficient and more cleaner than most conventional cooking as well as retaining its food essentials like minerals and vitamins. This is of course important to our health. So tonight we will prepare two quick, easy and healthy dishes using our Starmade brand, which is one of the microwave cookware selections that we have available at Brian Bell. These products are made of premium grade microwave safe material and are guaranteed against faulty material for a period of up to five years. So let's get started. Our first dish is marinated steamed trout served with rice and vegetables. This will be made possible using our fish and vegetable steamer and the 2.5 rice cooker, all using a microwave. You will need the fish of your choice or fish fillets, one small onion thinly sliced, one lemon thinly sliced, one tablespoon of oil, salt and pepper to taste. Marinate overnight by laying onion and lemon slices on top of the trout. Pour a bit of oil or wine over the trout. Cover and place in the refrigerator to marinate. Place in star-made fish steamer with a bit of water and cook on high for about 6 minutes. Now the rice, depending on the number of people, measure the desired amount into the star made rice cooker. For our case, we've measured two cups of rice, which will require three cups of water. This will take about 12 to 16 minutes on medium to high. When it's cooked, let it sit for approximately five minutes before serving. Now for the vegetables. Prepare desired vegetables and place into the steamer. Add a little bit of water on the bottom of the steamer. Also take note that salting your vegetables before cooking is not recommended, as it can cause dehydration. Cooking time should be adjusted to take into account personal taste preferences and will depend on the age and quality of the vegetables and the strength of your microwave. After it's cooked, allow to sit for one to three minutes before serving. Steaming food is one of the healthiest cooking methods as it retains vitamins and goodness. So there you have it, a quick, easy and healthy meal. And now we move on to our next dish, which is cooking a perfect omelette. Prepare your favorite omelette filling in a mixing bowl and set aside. Lightly beat together two eggs and two tablespoons of water. Grease the star made omelette maker and pour half of the egg mixture into each compartment. Leave the lid open and place the omelette maker into the microwave. Cook on high for about 30 seconds and continue to cook for another 40 seconds on high. Remove the omelette maker from the microwave 
Add equal amounts of fillings into both sides and cook on high for an additional 90 seconds. Once cooked, flip the omelet later over to fold in half. Gently slide the omelet onto a plate and serve immediately. So even though it's quick, easy and healthy, it also enhances natural flavors, reducing fat content, retains color and aroma, and most importantly, it's convenient and economical. So if you're that busy professional person, student, busy mom, or anyone who owns a microwave and can't find the time to cook, then head on down to your nearest Brian Bell Home Center to pick up that microwave cookware. Before we go, Thank you, Puro, for assisting me tonight and not forgetting the ladies at the coffee shop plaza. So remember, great products, great prices. That's Brian Bell. Until next time, I'm Jane Tokilala. Good night. Best price, best quality, guaranteed at Brian Bell. Right on, right on, Mr. B. After the break, we join our best of my Miriam in the house and home kitchen making Besta cheesy tuna on cooking with Besta. It's the tastiest tuna in a can. It's the new Besta tuna chunks in 185 grams. Packed with 100% premium white meat goodness. The finest export quality tuna is now available nationwide in oil and Good evening everyone and welcome once again to another Cooking with Besta. Our tonight's recipe is Besta Cheesy Tuna. In front of me we have one tablespoon capers, one teaspoon black pepper, half a teaspoon salt, one finely chopped onions, one third cup of mayonnaise, half a cup Kalamata olives, one tablespoon of lemon juice, eight slices of bread, and we have eight slices of cheese, three ripe tomatoes sliced, and our main ingredient, Besta tuna chunks in oil and brine, both in 185 gram. Okay viewers, to begin our recipe, we'll start with adding our capers. our onions mayonnaise our kalamata olives tablespoon of freshly juiced lemon we add all our ingredients together and mix well so the ingredients are incorporated. We then add our main ingredient, Besta canned tuna. We stir all the ingredients together. You know, Besta canned tuna is a good source of omega-3. Now our mixture is ready. I already prepared our bread on the baking tray. So now we add our tuna mixture. Top it up with a sliced tomato. And then we add in our cheese. Don't forget to put pinch of black pepper to taste and also salt. Mm -hmm. 
Okay viewers, our Besta cheesy tuna is now ready to be grilled in the oven for about 5 minutes. Okay viewers, our Besta cheesy tuna is now ready to be removed from the grill. Okay viewers, you can have this Besta cheesy tuna with a salad. Or a snack at during lunch time. Here you have it, Besta Cheesy Tuna. Thank you for viewing and hope we meet again next week, same time, on House and Home Cooking with Besta. It's better, it's Besta, pride of PNG. It's the tastiest tuna in a can. It's the new Besta Tuna Chunks in 185 grams. Packed with 100% premium white meat goodness. The finest export quality tuna is now available nationwide in oil and brine. Besta Tuna Chunks and Bestia. Proudly PNG made. Another interesting recipe there. And thank you once again to our best mom, Miriam. You can create wonderful recipes using Besta Tuna from stir fries like we featured last week on Cooking with Besta to salads, casseroles and even finger foods to serve as entrees or even canopies at a get together. More on House and Home in a moment. See you soon. Next week on House and Home, the National Development Bank team joins us on House and Home. Dr. Ambi talks more on mental health. Our friends from World Vision also join us once again on insights of the various projects they support. And we join the team for more on great quality products over at Brian Bell once again. It's been lovely having your company this evening on House and Home. Hope to have you join us once again, same time next week. This is all we have for you on the show this evening. The weather has changed a bit where in some areas it's starting to get quite cool in the evenings. Be certain to keep warm and when there's a sunny day, try to cover up with sunscreen because if you haven't noticed, the sun's rays have been out with quite a vengeance and those that don't easily get burnt are now experiencing the effects of being sunburnt. Once again, for those of you who have been keeping up to your health and fitness plan for the year, keep it up, keep going and don't stop. For those who have either yet to start or have been on and off, make it a must to either make a start or get back into it. Let's make this year a fitness year, not just for you, but for everyone, and incorporate healthy eating to your daily healthy plan as well. I promise you'll not regret it. If anything, your health will benefit from it. Exercise regularly, get into the habit of enjoying the outdoors more, and just keep moving. Until next week, from the House and Home crew and myself, it's a pleasant evening to you all.